Okay, and I'm gonna try to play some music for you again. I've been experimenting with that. It's been kind of a fail most times, but I'm gonna try again today. So before we start today in our movement, well, we will move right away, but I want us to move into the breath. So just come to your mat. And yes, I'm wearing a chest meter lovely shirt. <laughs> so um, we'll talk about trust a little bit as we get into our practice. So come to your mat, lie all the way down on your back. And just make sure you're comfortable. There we go. So just make sure you're comfortable and allow yourself to focus on your breathing. Okay. So in order to tap into your breath today, which is really our practice of trust, is going to be trusting our breathing to lead us through the practice, trusting ourselves to take the movements that work best for ourselves today. I want you to let your inhalations and exhalations really guide you more than the movement, more than anything. That's really the focus of the practice. So take some time here and I'll guide you through something called resonance breathing and there's a sound that goes with it. You'll be able to pick up on it as you hear it. There'll be an inhalation sound and an exhalation sound. And we're just gonna do this for one minute. Breathing in and out. And this next time you breathe in, I want you to breathe in and hold the breath in. Hold, hold, hold your breath in. Maybe sip in a few more moments of air here and then let it go through the mouth. I'm feeling how the breath can help you move into a state of calm, state of surrender on the exhale knowing when you're breathing in and holding that you have to take a special cue not to still be there, but when you exhale, it's a time to release, surrender, and start over. And take that into our practice today. So go ahead and hug your knees to your chest here. And then extend your left leg. Keep your right leg in. Just roll through your right foot. Make some circles here one direction and then the other direction. Okay. And then twist over your body to the left so your right arm can open to the side. Good, come back to the center, squeeze both knees into the chest. Take a breath in here. And on the exhale, extend the right leg, let the left leg come in, squeeze it in, and then roll through that left leg. One direction, the other direction, taking your time. And then 
roll over to the right, open your left arm out, creating that twist. Center here, squeeze the knees into the chest again. And then rock and roll the long way all the way up to a seated pose. Letting yourself pause here in the seated position. Take a breath in, reach your arms up. On the breath out, lean over to the right. Press your left hip down, gaze out underneath your left eye. Reaching up through the center, come on over to the opposite side. Gaze out underneath your right arm. Good. And then reach on up, take a full breath in, full breath out to slide your hands forward. Let your legs fix themselves so you can come right into a child's pose. And taking this moment in child's pose, to let the forehead drop down. Again, try to even out that breath. Find a smooth, steady breath. Good. Walk your fingers off the mat to the right side. Again, come through the center. Walk them the opposite direction. And come back to the center here. And just pause in your child's pose, letting your arms come behind you. So hands by your feet, forehead to the mat. Really turning inward here. Asking yourself in this moment, what is your foundation of trust? Who do you trust the most? Hopefully, yourself is at the top of that list. And if it's not, just allow yourself to explore that. And if it is, allow yourself to explore that too. Go ahead and stretch the arms forward here. Roll up to a table position and move into some cat cow. So dropping the belly down on the breath in, squeezing the breath out, rounding to cat back. And just continue that breath pattern, the movement pattern. The cow, the cat, allowing the spine to wake up, to open up. If there's any intuitive movements you feel you'd like to add on, go ahead and do that now. Hip sways, head circles. Again, tapping into that inner guidance, that inner sense of trust. You can listen to the sensations of the body. They're very intelligent. When we make a habit of that, we can start to respond to our body's needs a little bit more effectively. Go ahead and start to even out whatever sort of asymmetrical movement you may have been taking. And then push back to a child's pose again. It said that there's more nerve endings in your gut than there are in your brain. In that way, you can think of your gut <laughs> as kind of a second intelligence system for your body. Those physical sensations that you feel, like I said, they're very intelligent. Trust yourself, trust your gut, not just your thoughts. And go ahead and ripple the spine forward here. And carefully push yourself up to downward facing dog. Start to pedal out through the feet. 
And just like our child's pose, explore movement here if that feels good. Bending the knee, swaying the hip, shaking the head. Whatever feels right, move into that sensation. Our body is so intelligent, it can actually let us know even when we're trying to make a decision trying to think it out in our minds. What should I do, this or that? Our bodies can let us know the right decision for us before our thinking brain can figure it out. It's really interesting. Go ahead and steady yourself here. Look forward and step your right foot between your hands, drop to your left knee. You might say, how does the body know how to make a decision for me? Well, it has this feeling of expansiveness. Go ahead and reach your arms up here. Press into your right foot, lift a little higher. And as you exhale, cactus your arms, open the chest. So anything that makes you feel expansive like this when you think about it, that's usually the right decision for you. Not that you need to lift your arms and your chest, but it makes you feel like you want to. Go ahead, hinge from the hips. Flex your right toes, let your head bow down. Open up the hamstring. And crawl the hands forward and then push back to downward facing dog. And then look forward. Step your left foot between your hands, drop to your right knee, reach the arms up, breath in, press into the left foot, lift higher, and then breath out to expand with the chest, with the heart. Thinking of those things that make you feel this way, people, situations, decisions in your life that you know, ah, I've done this thing and it makes me think like this. Now things that make you contract, let's go ahead and fold forward. Forward folds are good, but things that make you want to be protective. When you think about them, you get a clenching in your gut a roundedness towards the chest. Go ahead, crawl the hands forward, press back to down dog again. That's your body's way of signaling to you, even before you've thought the decision through. Maybe this isn't the best one for me. I find that it's almost always right. Go ahead and walk your feet forward towards the top of your space. If you have blocks today, go ahead and place them at the top of your mat. You don't need them, but they might be nice to have. Inhale to extend your spine. Exhale, head towards the floor. Wiggle your feet apart, hold on to opposite elbows, ragdoll. In stillness or motion, whichever serves you best here. You can sway, you can rock. Good. Let the arms drape down. Bend your knees deeply. Let your chest drape on your thighs. See how that feels? And then very slowly, start to come up to stand with a rounded spine at first. Start to slowly straighten the legs. Circle the shoulders back when you stand all the way up and then inhale, arms up overhead. As you exhale, hold on to your left wrist wrist with your right hand and lean over. Good. Inhale up through the center. Exhale, switch sides. You got it, Jackson. <laughs> At least I think that's Jackson. <laughs> Inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, hinge at your hips, dive forward all the way down, head down. Inhale, half lift here, look forward. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Hold your push-up. And trust yourself in this moment here. Know which form of back bend is good for you. You can come to cow tilt. Or you can come all the way down through chaturanga. Lifting the heart into cobra or up dog. And then exhale back to downward facing. One of the beautiful things about the yoga practice, but one of the most challenging things is that it's so infinitely adaptable. It's up to us to listen to what's right for us. You're not 
push too much or not go too easy. We know, we know when we're in the middle path. The right one for us. Go ahead, inhale, look up at your hands. Exhale, walk the feet forward. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up all the way. Look up, touch the palms and dive right back down. Another sun salute angle. Inhale, half lift, head up. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Move through your flow today. You could go right to down dog, or you could take a full vinyasa. Again, lots of ways to modify if you like. Root down through the palms. Let the head and neck be soft here. Nice. Next inhale, look up at your hands. Exhale, make your way to the top of your space. You can walk, you can hop, whatever works for you. Good. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold, head down. Inhale, root to rise, reach all the way up. Touch the palms together, and we're gonna go through two more sun salutes. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Make your way to down dog in the way that's best for you today. Good, take your time. Feeling your hands root down, feeling your feet root down. Good, next breath in, look up at your hands. Breath out, travel to the top of your space. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, head down. Inhale, rise up all the way, palms touch and dive right back down. Last sun salute A, folding forward all the way. Good, inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold, hands down, feet back. Make your way through your vinyasa. Again, you can come through cat or cow rather, or up dog or cobra, or right to down dog. The vinyasa really comes from the breath. It feels more satisfying when we can attach it to a movement. But if ever you're uncertain what to do, Tap back into that breathing that we did at the beginning of class. Breathing in, breathing out. Right, next inhale, look forward. Exhale, make your way to the top of your space. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, fingertips down, bend your knees. Bring your chest to your thighs again and reach your arms forward. So this is Ardha Utkatasana. Half chair pose. Now use your back muscles, lift your back up. Chair pose. Good. On your exhale, forward fold, straight legs, head down. Inhale, chair pose again. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fingertips down, bend your knees, step your left foot way back, crescent lunge, reach your arms up, press your right leg straight, and on your exhale, cactus your arms, bend your elbows, and just hold here. Lift your heart, you can make fists with your hands if that's helpful, tilt your elbows a little forward, your wrists a little back. Good, on your exhale, fingertips down, Spiral your back heel down, long pyramid pose, straight front leg. Drop your head. This is where the blocks can come in handy if you need them or want them. <laughs> They're not necessary though. Good. On your next inhale, look up, come back to the ball of the foot, step your left foot up to move your right. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, chair pose, reach the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Two more chairs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, lift again, chair press. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, spine strong. Exhale, fingertips down, bend your knees. Right foot steps way back. Press and plunge, reach your hands up, press into that left leg, straighten it. On the exhale, bend your elbows, lift your heart. Tilt your elbows forward, tilt your wrists back, tip the heart up, chin up. Good, strong, powerful pose. Also known as prana mudra. Good, on an exhale, fingertips touch down, spiral your back heel down, straighten your front leg. This is a long version of pyramid pose. Head can drop down, fingertips can be on blocks if you want that. Good. Good, next breath in, look forward. Breath out, come to the ball of the back foot, step your right foot up to meet your left. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, rise up all the way. Hold on to opposite elbows, lean over to the right, kick your hips to the left. Good, inhale up here, exhale, switch sides. Inhale, reach up, look up. Touch the palms together, dive all the way down. Inhale, half lift, heart reaches. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Make your way through vinyasa or just go directly to down dog. Vinyasas are always optional. They're a great way to add heat to the body, especially if you're feeling cold. Good. Raise your right leg high as you breathe in. Breathe out, tap right knee to right arm anywhere on the leg. Good. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, right foot steps forward. Warrior two, spiral your arms open. Good. On an in-breath, reach your arms, straighten your front leg. Out-breath, bend back into warrior two. Take a deeper breath in here. And on your breath out, side angle. Bring your right forearm to your thigh. Sweep your left arm up and over your ear. Spiral your chest open. Think of a little back bend happening here. Nice. Look down. Touch the floor with your left hand. Come to the ball of the back foot. Spiral your right arm up. Wiggle your right foot to the right a little and come to the outside edge of your left foot. Press your hips high. This is a version of Vashasthasana side hip. Good. Look down. Unwind. Both hands down. Step back. Either make your way through the flow or just go to down dog. When you arrive, left leg goes up and back. Good. Exhale, tap left knee to left arm. Good. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step through. Warrior two. Make sure you're steady. And once you arrive, let your breath move you. Inhale, reach the arms straight in the front legs. Exhale, sink lower. Stretch your left arm forward, extended side angle. Reach your right arm up and over your ear. Spiral your chest open, a little bit of a back bend action. Good, look down, right hand touches down. Come to the ball of the back foot as you twist. Good, wiggle your left foot to the left a little. You can roll onto the outside edge of the right foot. Coming into a version of Vasustasana. Good, you got it. Look down, both hands down, and make your way back to down dog. Good. Take a breath in. Breath out. Next, inhale, rise to your toes. As you exhale, bend your knees, walk or hop to the top of your space. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up, look up. And exhale, bring your hands right in front of your heart. Wiggle your feet, mat width distance, toes out, heels in. Reach your arms high, breath in. Breath out, hands slide down in front of you and just come into a squat, malasana squat here. 
Press your elbows towards your thighs or your knees. Lift your heart. Good. Reach your right arm down. Sweep your left arm up. Press your head and neck back. Good. Come through the center. Palms together. And on a breath out, switch sides. Left arm down, right arm reaches. Head, press your head and neck back. Good. Come through center. Palms touch. Inhale. Rise all the way up. Open your arms. Five-pointed star. Look up. Feel that expansion. Exhale. Hands right to your heart. Wiggle your feet together here. Bend your knees. Coming into a little chair pose with prayer hands. Step your left foot way back. Crescent lunge. Reach your arms up. Good. Straighten your front leg. Breathe in. Breathe out, cactus your arms and hold. Good. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fingertips down. Shorter pyramid pose. Step your back foot in a little. Spiral that back heel down, straightening your front leg, head drops. Hands to blocks or on the floor. Again, you have them, they're a nice tool to use. Good. Inhale, look up. Exhale, simply step left foot up to meet the right. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale and fold. Inhale, rise up all the way. Touch the palms together and come right into that chair pose with the prayer hands. Good. Step back with your right foot. Crescent lunge, reach up. Take a breath in, straighten your front leg. Exhale, bend into it, cactus the arms, lift the heart. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fingertips down, step your back foot in about a third of the way. Heel is down this time. It's a shorter pyramid pose. Left leg is straight. Good. See if you can lift and open the collarbones a little. Good. Look forward, bend your left knee a little as you step the right foot up to meet the left. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, rise up all the way. And as you exhale, touch the palms, slide all the way back down. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, hands down, feet step back. Make your way through vinyasa or just go right to downward dog. Good. Take your time. On your next breath in, take your right leg high. Breath out, tap your right knee to your right upper arm. Good, inhale, take right leg up and back. Exhale, step right foot forward. Warrior two, come all the way up. Good, take a breath in, reach the arms, straighten the front leg. This time, triangle pose first. Keep that front leg straight. Good. Go right from triangle to side angle. So bend your right knee, bring your forearm to your thigh, sweep your left arm up and over your ear. Good. Now if you want to enjoy this open twist more, just bring your right hand down or go into the closed twist. Bring your left hand down, right arm up. An option to move into that side plank variation. Wiggle that right foot to the right or maybe stack your feet on top of one another. Yeah, you got it, Marissa, nice. Good, wherever you're at, look down, touch down, and make your way back to down dog. Good, a lot of options. <laughs> Take your time, find a nice steady down dog, and one full breath in and out. And then lift that left leg high as you breathe in. Breathe out, tap left knee to left upper arm. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step it through. Spiral your hands, arms open, warrior two. Good. Inhale, straighten the arms and the leg. Exhale, tilt the hips, triangle pose. From triangle, go right into side angle. Bend your left knee, forearm to thigh, right arm sweeps up and over your ear. Again, we 
you can enjoy the open twist by reaching down towards the floor or reach down towards the floor with the right hand, spiral the left arm up for closed twist. And if you prefer, move into Vashisthasana, side plank. The variation with your left foot supporting you or maybe you just stack your feet. Good, take your time, you got it, next set. Look down, make your way back to down dog. Yeah. Good. On your next exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet. Take a breath in here. Lift halfway. Breath out, forward fold. Wiggle your feet apart as wide as the mat again. Toes out, heels in. One more chance to come into Malasana, Yogi Squat. So good for us. Well, this time, stretch your fingertips forward, round like you're doing cat back, and let your head come down. Now, if this feels good, stick with it. But if you want to work in arm balance today, go ahead and shift your gaze and your weight forward into your hands. Maybe lift up one foot and the other for curl pose. Good. Take your time. And just move with the breath, whether you're still or moving in and out of a tempting crow. Trust your hands if you're doing crow. Good. Come on down. Squat back down. Malasana. Good. On an inhale, let's come all the way up. Reach the arms open. Five command star. Again, that expansive feeling. And exhale, hands right to the heart. Wiggle your feet together here. Good. Inhale, reach the arms up. As you exhale, dive all the way down. Inhale, look up. Walk your hands out to plank pose. Keep your feet together. We're going to come into side plank once more. This time you have the option of coming down to a forearm if you want. Roll to the outside edge of the right foot. And you can keep your left foot down or you can stack it or you can even lift it. Decorate this however you want. What feels right to you. Yeah, good. Look down, carefully switch sides. So you might need to come through high plank first and then down to the forearm. You might need to bring your knees down and then switch. So up to you. Good. Lift your top hip higher. Nice there, nice there. Good. Nice, Emily. Reach up through the middle finger of your top hand. Yeah, good. Look down, both hands down and make your way back to down dog or to child's pose. Take as much movement as you need to get to the position of your choice for rest, or as little movement as you need. But give yourself a moment of rest. Good. I love the praying child option that some of you are taking with the palms in front, the head down, the elbows down, the, gets into the shoulders a little bit more. Really nice for a cold day. Good for any day, really. Good, on your inhale, look up. And then make your way to down dog if you're not already there. Good. Rise up to the tiptoes, look forward. Exhale, walk or hop to the top. Inhale to lift halfway. So you exhale, dive down, head down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Slide the hands right in front of the heart. Good. Step your feet so they're towards the long edge of the mat. Doesn't matter which one, just whichever one feels good to you. Toes slightly in, heels slightly out. Pull down on your hips with your hands. Circle the heads of the shoulders back, and on an exhale, come halfway down. Keep elongating your spine here. Good. Bring one hand down and then the other. If the floor is far away and you have blocks, you can use a block. Otherwise, just stay right where you're at. Good. Rock a little bit more weight into the front parts of your feet. And then walk your hands either forward or back. Trust what you need today. And if you don't know, take the time to explore. See what feels better. Hands forward or hands back. But whatever you do, keep hugging your hips towards one another. Keep rocking weight to the front part of your foot. Okay, and then we'll all come 
into a twist here. Slide your hands back underneath your shoulders. Now this twist is a neutral one, so go ahead and bring your right hand down right underneath your nose. Stretch your left arm up. Good. If you want more, bring the left hand behind your back. And just press your brain back in your skull. Yeah, open that left shoulder. Good, on the inhale, unwind the left arm. On the exhale, look down and switch sides. Left hand underneath your nose, stretch the right fingertips up. Press your head back and maybe wrap the right arm behind the back. Keep the spine long, that looks really good, yeah. Lift your head a little more. Good, unwind the top arm if it was wrapped. Exhale, both hands down. And this time, crawl your hands forward, maybe come down to the forearm. So, so much weight is into the balls of the feet that you're actually kind of forward here. This is kind of like a dolphin pose with wide legs, but you get to really like kind of have a wider stance. Really nice, you guys. Go ahead and walk the hands back in. Inhale, look up. Exhale, turn your right toes out. Turn your left toes out. And then bend your right knee, skandasana. I like to call this a ninja move as well. You can bring your hands to your heart if you want to work strength and balance or keep the hands on the mat. It gets the inner thigh, the hip, some of the hamstring. Okay, come up through center and switch sides. Again, hands can come to heart. You can lift your chest, kind of like malasana if you want. Or hands to the floor if you need a little extra support. Good, Brendan, nice. Nice, Dara. Lift your chest if you can, just a little. Yeah, just a little. Good, go ahead and come back to the center here. Some hands right to the center. Wiggle your feet in. And slowly bend your knees and roll up to stand. Coming all the way to standing here, roll the heads of the shoulders out, and then just step towards the top of the mat. Beautiful. We're going to get into a little hip opening. If you have your blocks, go ahead and use your blocks. If you don't have blocks, no worries. So if you're lucky enough to have blocks, put them in front of you. And you'll take yourself into a squat here, guys. Okay, so into the squat, you're going to take your right foot and cross it over your left thigh. Now, if you have blocks, it's a little bit easier, but you can always touch the floor, but it's going to maybe feel like a really big hip stretch right away. It's a way to do pigeon. Yeah. So think about your chest stretching towards your right shin. And if it's possible for you to go deeper today, good. Just like Marissa, head down and see if you can wrap that right foot around your left upper arm. Your left leg can be bent or straight. Just breathe into the sensation on your right hip. Good. I was going to say, if some of you have an arm balance day, you could practice it, but we haven't done too much opening here, so good. Inhale, look up if you're using blocks, hands on blocks. Step your right foot down and just forward bend here for a moment, head down. Inhale and slowly roll up all the way. Roll the heads of the shoulders back. Nice. And then we'll switch sides. So bend your knees. If you have blocks, put your hands on your blocks for balance. Take your left foot and stack it over your right thigh. You can have hands on blocks, hands on your shin, or to the floor. Sink into it. Take your time. This takes all of your focus. It takes all of your awareness. So just let your attention go to the breath here. Soften the muscles in the face. Yeah. Good. Slowly start to release. Stand up a little. Release your left foot. Forward fold. And from here we're just going to step back to lizard. So if you're using blocks again, this can feel really nice, but you don't have to. Take your left foot way back, drop to your left knee. And you can use blocks 
as we wiggle your left, our right foot to the right, come down to the forearms, or you can just use your hands on the floor. And I want you to follow your intuition here. So if you feel like you want to add a twist, if you want to go deeper, walk in the hands forward, you can. There is a variation where you can actually reach through the back foot if that's appropriate for you, if it feels good, if you want to explore it, do it. You'll get more of a stretch on the hamstring of your back, or on the quadriceps of your back leg. What is your body craving? What is it needing today? Good. If you have the back foot, let it go gently. And then slowly, everyone, you're just going to shift your hips back. Flex your front leg straight. Come to this half Hanuman pose. Yeah, take your time. It's a counter pose. If you want to go into a fuller split, by all means, you can work a full split, or you can take a block or both your blocks and work on wiggling into a full split more. Depends. One more breath wherever you're at. Good, Daryl. Nice focus. Good. And then slowly lift your back knee. Take your time to support yourself. Step your left foot up. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, hands down. Right foot steps back. Find your lizard. Okay, so my instruction to you on the other side was to follow your intuition. So my instruction on this side is the same. Follow your intuition. You can just stretch forward. Use blocks. Don't use blocks. You can twist if it feels appropriate. Can do a combination of that. You can even roll to the outside edge of the left foot a little bit, pressing the thigh open if that feels good. But see what works for you today. What's right today isn't always right tomorrow. And it's not always what served us before. Become present to what is in this moment. Like I said, the adaptability of the yoga practice makes it super accessible, but it also makes it really challenging the more we practice to just trust and do exactly what serves us instead of what we think we need. Go ahead and release. If you're holding on to the foot, wiggle your left foot back in and stretch back. Get that hamstring stretch. If you want to go into a fuller split by all means, Feel free, you could use your hands or just test it out using blocks. The more you hug your hips towards one another, the more accessible a split is, by the way. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but you'll feel it. Good, slowly make your way back to the top of the mat. So bending your right or left knee, stepping your right foot up to meet the left. Inhale to lift halfway here. Exhale and fold. Inhale, root to rise, reach all the way up. Good. And slide the hands right in front of the heart. We're going to do something called standing Ustrasana. So those of you that know Ustrasana, camel pose, you usually do it on your knees. We're just going to do it standing today because it's more accessible. It's a very expansive feeling too. So take your feet a little wider than hips with distance. Make sure the toes are forward, not turned out. If they're turned out, your little back will get compressed. So toes are forward. Press your hips forward. Circle your shoulders back and keep pressing the hips forward, the heart up. If it feels appropriate to walk your hands down your thighs at all, you can do that. Just don't let the hips collapse. Keep the gaze up, maybe a little bit back. Good, lead from your heart, lift, 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 come back to stand, just pause here, hands at heart. I want you to squeeze your outer ankles in. Don't move the feet, just charge the legs so they're nice and strong. Feel your tailbone rooting down. Now, if 
standing Ustrasana worked well for you, you can repeat it if you'd rather come to your knees and do regular traditional version of camel, reaching for your feet. By all means, go ahead and do that. But let's go ahead and move into our second back bend. So press your hands towards your hips, wherever you're at, knees or standing, and then push forward, lift the heart. Keep spiraling the shoulders towards one another on the back body, pressing the heart up, lifting the energy, root down through your feet more. Good, on your next inhale, come up, hands slide in front of your heart, Hug your outer ankles in, neutralize the pelvis by bringing the tailbone down. Good. And then inhale, reach up. As you exhale, let's take one last standing back bend. <laughs> Hands to hips, press the heart up, elbows hug in. Maybe go a little deeper if it feels appropriate. You can walk the hands down the sides if it feels okay. Next inhale, lift all the way up, hands slide in front of the heart, and just be really soft everywhere in the body right now. The face, the arms, belly, the legs. Good. On a breath in, reach up here. Breath out, forward fold, bend your knees to come into this forward fold because we just did all those back bends. So just be really gentle, deep knee bend. Sway a little bit side to side. And then make your way to a seated position. Some of you heard me at the beginning of class. In injury, I'm working through is my tailbone. I have a very sensitive tailbone. <laughs> so coming to a seat, I can do crazy yoga poses, but sitting down is hard for me. <laughs> anyway, Dandasana pose here. A lot of you got down to the floor more gracefully than me. Good job. <laughs> Press your hands down. Circle your shoulders back. Make your back really strong here. Flex your feet. Soften the muscles in your face. Good. Keep the activation in the legs, the back, the belly, but reach your arms up. Good. Draw your right foot in to your left back. Bring your left fingertips down. Stretch your right arm up and twist just a tiny bit. This is okay. So twisting just a tiny bit, reach for your left foot or shin or ankle, and use your left hand to press down and back. It will help propel yourself forward a little. Soften your shoulders. You can release that left hand to the front to meet the right hand if that feels nicer. Again, soften all the muscles in the face. Slowly release, come up here. Reach your right hand back and spiral onto your right shin. Get this lovely side stretch. Good, left foot pushes down. Right hand, right shin, push down. Good, come back to a seat. Find Dandasana, staff pose. Both legs straight, palms reaching for the floor. Circle the heads of the shoulders back. Stretch the arms up. Bring your left foot in towards your right thigh. If you need to use your hand, go ahead and do so. And then reach your right fingertips down. Push down and back as you reach forward with your left hand. And just touch down, hold whatever you can reach easily. And then reach the opposite hand forward when you're ready. If you're ready. If it feels nicer to keep that right hand on the floor, by all means do it. Relax the muscles in the face and the throat here. Soften the shoulders. Good. Go ahead and come up. Take your time if you didn't get that forward fold, by the way. I know some of you may need to take that time. The rest of us, go ahead and Press up and back, so left hand stretches back, right foot, right arm, or 
reaching, reaching, reaching. Then go ahead and come down. Dandasana, stack pose once more. Bend your knees a little, reach your arms up here, and forward fold. And this is a healthier forward fold than straight legs for a lot of us. If forward folding is easy, straighten your legs and come down. But if forward folding is a challenge, keep the knees bent. It's better for your hamstring attachments, better for your back. And slowly release, look up. Bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose. Peel the feet open, lift the chest. If you can see Daryl's feet, I'm sure his toes are touching down. <laughs> and then go ahead and forward bend. And if you can't forward bend or if your feet barely want to peel apart, that's quite normal. Don't worry about it. Now we all want to see Daryl's feet at the end. What I miss about in-person classes is seeing everything and hearing your breath. So please listen to your breath here. Let it be something that soothes you, helps you relax. And slowly come up. And then we get to take the feet forward, keep the feet together and come to Tarasana. You get to round your spine this time. So if you have a pillow or a block or something, this can make it even nicer, but you get to just collapse down here. Dropping the head down, rounding the back. It's a great position to turn inward. So it's just like Baddha Konasana, except your feet are far away from these, so it's like a big diamond shape. Yeah, there it is. Very slow and gentle as you rise up. And hug the knees together and find the way down to your back. Coming onto your back, hug your knees in, rock a little bit in this Atanasana pose, massaging the low back. Keep the knees together and drop them to the left. Open your right arm out. Nice recline twist. If, again, you have a block or something, you want to put the block in between your knees that can make these recline twists feel that much nicer. It just aligns better. But again, it's not necessary. through the center. Take a couple moments here to realign your hips, to rock on the low back. And when you feel steady and ready, drop the knees to the right, open the left arm out, look out over the left arm if it feels good. Again, option to put something between the knees if that serves you better. If you've never tried it, it's really nice.
come back to the center here. Squeeze your knees in. Okay. And decide by listening to your body what you need to finish your practice. A happy baby, a shoulder stand, legs up the wall, anything that feels good. More twists or just move right into Shavasana. Take what suits you and your needs in this place, in this time today. Again, tapping into the intelligence of our physical body can help us make more sense of our mental and emotional body. In yoga, they literally call our mental and emotional states, mental body and emotional body. They don't see it as something different than the physical body. It's all interwoven. Thoughts, feelings, sensations. So on that very primitive level, listening to the physical body and letting it guide you. Come into your rest pose. We'll just be here for another minute or two. I'll let you know when it's time to get up. So just enjoy, relax, and completely release. Continue to rest here. I have some pretty quotes on trust I'm going to share today because I couldn't choose my favorite. You can just listen and continue to rest. This first one says, trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of evolving. When nothing is certain, anything is possible. And the other quote I have for you today says, trust yourself and you will start to trust others. And finally, the last one I have says, when you fully trust a person without any doubt, you get one of these two results, a person for life or a lesson for life. You never lose. Going back to that idea of evolving, I want you to rest and know you can trust life today by trusting yourself. Rest here knowing you are enough and you can trust the timing of your life exactly where you're at in this moment. And begin to take a deeper breath in here. Let it go with some sort of sound, some sort of sigh. Start 
like to make small movements in the fingers and toes. Rotate the wrists and the ankles and wrap the head from side to side. And when you're ready, start to stretch out. Nice morning stretch. And then hug the knees to the chest. Give yourself a well-deserved hug. And then roll to whichever side you have space for, right side if possible. In fetal position, just for a position of new beginning, a moment of stillness and gratitude. And then use the strength of your arms to push up to your seat. And take your time here to press the palms together in front of the heart, resting the thumbs on the sternum. We'll end class with the sound of Om. You can listen or chant along with me if you like. And of course, the breath together afterwards. We'll go ahead and release out all the air. And take a very deep in breath here for Om. Om. in the air. Once more filling up and letting it go. And thank you so much for practicing with me today and being here virtually with one another. <laughs> Namaste everyone. Oh and choose. You have to choose for me. Just put up on your hand one or two. You're helping me make a huge life decision right now because <laughs> apparently I can't trust myself. No. Okay, I see two, oh, one, two, I can't see Emily's. Oh, two is the winner. Okay, guys. Well, I gotta tell you, this was puzzle number one I was gonna do. <laughs> and this is puzzle number two. <laughs> this is the one I just finished. So, <laughs> if anybody wants a puzzle, um, it's beautiful. That, that's how I choose my puzzles. It has to be a picture that I absolutely love. Because <laughs> otherwise I don't have the motivation to finish it. <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm going to be working on. And it's all because of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, thanks for helping me choose. It's called The Night Garden. <laughs> <laughs>